Hello. Hello. Oh, welcome back. <laughs> hey, I'm Roy, and this is Val, and uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, today we're going to talk about, you know, we were talking about, like last time we did something that was like a quick gift idea, and so we're still sort of in that mode where we're thinking, well, you know, I mean, Christmas is almost here, so, you know, what can you do as a quick gift or maybe a quick decoration, right? Fun with so, trees. Fun with trees, is that? Is that good? That's, I like that. That works. So we See, have look these, at they're really fun. <laughs> these great stacked trees. And uh, if you want to know, I mean, you can get the information. I think Kaylee's going to have it posted. But if you want to search on our website under stacked trees, you'll find it. Or the there's an item number, FP106D. Um, we'll get you there, too. But Val and I are going to show you, I think, uh, how to do it. So. We, right. We're, we're going to talk about the, the beetle net cut system, which makes it go really quickly. Yeah, so if you can kind of see the setup here that we have here, right, so it's just cutting a lot of squares in of a variety of sizes. And so we're um, starting out, I guess depending on how uh, big you want the tree, is what size you start with as a base, right? Yes. It's sort of tickling me that we're showing all these and we're not talking about the fact they we're, look like we're they're We're kind of ignoring the They look like they're from right. but, um, That's good. Yeah, but we'll, we'll talk all about that because there is some fusing that went on here, gluing here. So that's what we're going to start with. First, so this right? one was glued, yes. and yeah. then these guys over here were fused. Yes, yes. Yeah, because the directions actually talk about gluing them, which is a great way of doing it. But, you know, we have all these kilns here, and we have all this great fusible glass. So we were like, you know, let's just try to tack fuse them together. So you can see some of ours that maybe didn't turn out so well, but... Uh, yeah. We, uh, we, we do have a firing schedule, so we'll... Yeah, if you want to recreate this, we <laughs> have a right. firing schedule. We can tell you how to do any of these. Yeah. Leaning trees, if that's what you want to do, we can show you how. So, um, Kaylee will pay, post it later. Um, Absolutely. Everything that we're going to use today, I will post a link when we're done and make it real easy. Great. Okay, so you're going to start with yeah. beetle bit? I think I'm going to start by cutting some. So, we have this great uh, system called a mini beetle bit cutting system. So if you're you know, intimidated by having to cut a whole lot of squares, I mean, this is, system here is a great way of cutting them, you know, uh, repeated sizes. I, I think for me, the, the biggest thing is just trying to, you, know, you can do it quickly, right? So if you can see the setup here, um, this one has a flying beetle bit. This is actually the cutting system. This is the cutter here. I don't know if you can see how that has a glass cutter on it. And it fits on here. And so you don't have to use your own glass cutter. You don't have to worry about trying to stabilize the glass cutter. To me, that's one of the best things about it. The cutter just rides right on this rail, and I don't have to worry about tipping it or doing anything kind of weird with it. But the glass stops right here, so... Yeah, and then the, so it's got this nice little ruler here, so that tells me I don't even have to measure the glass beforehand. I can just use the ruler. I know how well you can see it, but so it starts at zero, and then it goes up by inches on either side of that zero. So depending on, you know, whether you're left or right-handed, it works. Um, if you want to hold the glass a different way it works it's really kind of nice so I'm going to cut some the of the base for this piece which uh, if you're curious is a four inch square so we start with a four inch square and then we just repeatedly go smaller and smaller by a quarter of an inch so um, the four inch squares the, the base and then we're going to start from there so I'm going to slide this underneath as I mentioned before I don't know how well Kaylee can show you this but all I have to do is slide the glass up to the mark on the ruler. And now when I cut this, I'm gonna have a, you know, a four inch strip. Um, so I'll just come in and score this. Let me put on my safety glasses real quick, right? When we're cutting glass, it's always a great idea. So then with this, I know I can just slide it and do the same thing, right? Get to the four inch mark, find where that is, come in and score it. The um, cutting head is adjustable, so depending on, depending on, um, you know, the thickness of the glass. So there's a little set screw in there that will allow you to. Am I gluing? Yeah, I think, is that what we're gonna do? Well, we, I don't think we're gonna do that. Right, I don't know, I think maybe we should. Try fusing it? Yeah, and then we can, maybe get it more successful. But let's pretend we were gluing it, right? So if okay. you want to talk about the glues or how you might go about that. I would take this and open it if I were gluing. What brand are we using? This is um, Rapid Fuse. It's something, it's, I think it's just like a super glue, right? Yeah, it's like a super glue. Okay, yeah. So um, the clear one, like this one that I did that has the green in it, it's basically pretty much clear. I started by um, using the UV which we did the, the last, wasn't that our last mm -hmm. one we did? 
And because um, and I really love that UV stuff, but it was going a little slow. And that's really not how I like to roll. So I started using this. <laughs> and then this was dab and stack and dab and, and stack. This is more like a super glue, right? Yeah, this and it is more like a super glue. So um, I don't know. You know, I can talk about the UVs because I really do like them. And the one thing is, is that, you know, you don't stick your fingers together, which I sort of did with this. So you have to be careful with this stuff, but it does go more quickly. So it would just be, I just put a dollop in the center. And we haven't really talked about the, the different glasses that we've mm -hmm. used. And I think that in doing this, the more flat your glass is, the better off you are. Because if it's got a little roll to it or a little ripple, you tend to not get real good contact and then you need to put more glue than you thought and now you are you know, kind of have to go back and revisit some spots. So the, the less texture, the better. But if you do use a bit of a texture or a bit of a rough roll that whatever, you, you want to put a good dollop of this. Yeah, or I grabbed another adhesive too. There's one that I'll reach in front of you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So sometimes we use the silicone. One of the advantages to the silicone is just, yeah. it's a thicker, <laughs> it's a thicker. I'm going to hold it. It's a thicker adhesive. Uh, so again, if your glass isn't totally, uh, perfectly flat, that right. sometimes takes that up would, some space. Yeah, and, that would make it a little easier. But it does take a little bit longer to set up, and that's one of the disadvantages to the silicones, right? And it's not going to be, it's not going to dry immediately, so and you do have slide, to it yeah, it can slide a little bit. So anyway, but they all work. It's just how much effort you want to put into the time and such. But I don't think that you, you definitely do not want to put a lot of glue if you're going to put it in the kiln, because it really won't do you any good to glue it before you put it in the Yeah, we were thinking about maybe using some, you can see we have some uh, bullseye glass tack on here. On the, and it comes in a couple of different viscosities, right? So yes. one, one's probably thicker than the other, right? It now. is the high viscosity that is the thickest one, which if you watched our other video, someone told me it's that possible. wasn't true, that that and, wasn't true. <laughs> and it was true. I was right. So if you're interested in any of our old videos though, you can go back and you can check on our um, Facebook, um, at the uh, video section on our Facebook page or go to our YouTube channel. And you can see, I know that especially with the last one, we talked a lot about the UV adhesive, so that might be a, a good place to check up on that if you're interested. So if uh, we talked about though, maybe in the kiln that we might use the glass tack, it's just a way of just um, stabilizing the glass while we get it into the kiln. Uh, again, probably not real important to glue it necessarily. I know when we did a lot of these trees, we assembled them in the kiln and just kind of set them on the Yes, it wasn't easy to kiss, to carry him. No, no, it's not easy. No, but this one we can. So the other thing too, when the directions, I know you've taken a picture of those a little bit, but there, there's instructions there and, and they're pretty good, but I was kind of trying to turn them all the same way and balance each one. And I think that you just, each one you put on, you just spin a little bit so that because we're, we're after the pointy look. Yeah, right? it just so, look pointy as well. Yeah, so I wouldn't get too hung up on worrying about, you know, if they're exactly spaced the right distance from each yeah. one or whatever, because they, they always look pretty good no matter. And I don't think you have to worry if they're exactly the same size either. Right. I mean, uh, that, I mean, it's a tree, right? And so, you know, they don't all look exactly perfect in nature. Uh, cut close, right, I think is what, what we say. But uh, what does sort of help, the system really is doing like four of about the same size and then go a little bit smaller and then keep going until you're you know, target yes. cutting little tiny pieces, I guess. Right. I, I cut, I have to cut some a little bit more here. I want to show one more, uh, I, the two inch squares. So I cut a two inch strip and then now all I'm going to do again is come in here, set this up to the, the two inch mark, um, score it. Now I can move it over to the four inch mark, right? And then cut the next one. Slide it over to the six inch mark, and you can see how I can, you know, quickly, um, and that's eight at the end, so I'll just come in and score that one. And you can see how quickly, you know, I can cut all of those two inch squares. That's good. I mean, surprisingly, this, yeah, this really made it go so much quicker. I was doing it by hand the other day, and it, it, I was amazed at how much faster that was. <clears throat> so, oops, wrong size. But otherwise, normally you'd be gluing as you go, right? As you, I think you mentioned yes. that, and, and we just kind of stack them and, yes. and try to just, you know, I mean, we, we were in the kiln, we were doing our best to try to get them as straight as we could get them. If you notice some of our trees, you'll see them kind of leaning a little bit. So, um, uh, my personal opinion is it might be just temperature issue, and um, really, or it could be. 
some of the glasses that we use, so we used, um, <laughs> like we have a variety of different manufacturers here. We use Bullseye, Yakagini, Oceanside, um, at different, I mean, not all together, obviously, but in different projects. And, it, you know, sometimes the glass isn't the flattest, and so I'm sure in the kiln, as they, they start to heat up, they probably settle and move a little. And because of that, we get kind of a lean a bit. And um, I, still, I still think we went too hot. Yeah, we think maybe, so uh, if you look at this one, uh, Our succulent is, tree. Yeah, this is more like a succulent, right? Looks kind of interesting. This uh, one we did at um, 1330 for the fusers out there that are curious. Um, you can see what, at that temperature what had happened, right? Um, settled too much, leaned a little too much. So when we tried again, we went a little cooler. Uh, this one's did you at, say? Did you say that this one everybody thinks looks like a succulent? So if you want to make a succulent... I guess that's a great way to make a succulent. I think they're kind of cute. This one was, uh, we did it at a little bit lower temperature, 1290. So uh, again, for the fusers out there, you probably know that, I mean, not every kiln's the same. So I think we are gonna post some firing schedules, but you wanna kinda take them with a grain of salt and try them out first before you get uh, too involved. I think this, we're gonna try it again and, and probably go under 1290. I don't know if we've come up with a temperature yet, but probably I 1275. That's what I wanted everything. 1275 yeah. is what I had in mind. What was the irid fired at? Yeah, so this one actually, these two were fired at the exact same temperature. So um, they're both uh, Yakagini glasses. And if you see this iridized one here, what's interesting is that sometimes the, ir the irid on the um, Yakagini glasses will um, burn off in the kiln, but we did 1330 and you can see the iridized coating still stayed on that piece. So the height probably played a part as well because this is much shorter than this one. Yeah, I think that's the height helped with it not leaning so much and settling down and looking like a succulent, but, uh, um, but also, you know, iridized coating sometimes can affect uh, how the glass melts uh, and, and can keep the glass a little stiffer, if that makes sense, right? So it doesn't settle as much because of that coating. I'm sure that's probably affecting it some. Um, the little tree that Val did here that has all the, the nice frit on it that we're using for decoration was done at the same temperature as this one. And so you can see that they both have a, t a slight lean to them. Um, yes, they do. They were leaning Towards, towards the center of the kiln. Oh, yeah, I know, know, wasn't that was, cute? I'm not sure that that was, you know. Well, I'm really sure why, why that was not happening, but. So. Um, oh, the other thing we did want to talk about too was the sharp. Mm. I mean, yes. so the ones we did fuse aren't really that sharp anymore. They still look a little pointy, but they really did round up. These ones that you don't fuse, you have to be careful that they're not someplace where some little hands could get a hold of them because they're sharp. I mean, they're, it's just a raw edge of glass. So they would be something you keep up away yeah, from. Yeah, I wanted to show the diamond pads actually because when I was cutting the squares, you know, if you're familiar with cutting glass, sometimes you get little flares on the ends and uh, just to, again, make it so you're less likely to get cut. I was using these really nice diamond pads. They come in a couple of different grits. Um, I just happened to grab the uh, 220 grit and a 400 grit, but they also come like in a 120 grit, so a little more aggressive. But it's a great way of just, you know, if you need to just take off a little flare or take off that little sharp edge, right? You just kind of run that diamond coating on along the edge. It helps if it's wet. I mean, it just kind of helps preserve the diamond coating better, but um, it works dry too. But it's a nice way, like I said, of just trying to take off any sharp points that you might have if you're concerned about it. The other thing we wanted to show you was uh, tweezers, right? So that oh. we had used a couple of tweezers that kind of came in handy. So these are kind of a unique pair of tweezers that have like a little shovel on the end. So it's a nice way of scooping out frit and just trying to delicately yeah. place it somewhere. So this is kind of on the little tree with the frit on it. We kind of dusted it. Yeah. Want, want me to do it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, exactly. Ooh, look at that. So it's a cute little shovel. And then, then the bigger chunks, we you, you could use the other end with the tweezers to place and um, if, well, the angle tweezers are kind of nice for that too. If, you're, if you have a little bit bigger pieces you're trying to grab, sometimes yeah. that those come in handy too. Yes. Again, trying to be real careful. I actually used it for trying to put the last little tiny piece on top, use the tweezers so, so it wouldn't knock over the whole stack I just put up. Yeah, so did we talk about the frit on there? I think we did. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then we used, I think sometimes we could use the glass tag, the bullseye glass tag too, to help hold the frit in place. If oh, I was going to say, that's the part I meant that kind yeah. of helped. Because sometimes just trying to pour frit on it'll bounce over as you kind of notice. So. It dropped off, yeah. yeah. You need a little bit of stick them on there. Rose is asking what the pads are called. Uh, these are called diamond hand pad, hand pan. 
What? Had hand pads. <laughs> Say that five times fast. I'm in hand pads. <laughs> they come in a pack of four, but then we also yep. sell them individually yes. too. Yeah, and we'll link you, those. What would you recommend is the best grit for this? Well, I was actually using the 220. Like I was saying, if you needed something a little more aggressive, there's a 120. Uh, so a little coarser that will take a little more off. The finer it is, the less it chips. So sometimes, you know, that's a, a nice idea. If you're just trying to take little sharp parts off, the finer ones actually work pretty well. But thanks for the question. If you guys have other comments, you know, um, uh, do it in the section below, or you can always reach us on Facebook. You can email us, Facebook at DelphiGlass.com, or send us a message on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, we do answer the questions afterwards. I mean, we might not get to them right away, but we're happy to try to um, clarify anything. Or if you have ideas for something else that you'd like Val and I to do, I mean, feel free to reach out to us. Yes, we love all of your guys' ideas. Yeah, we do. Otherwise, I think we're probably done, right? I think so. It? I'm going to finish stacking that okay. and let Roy carry it over and put it in the kiln. And then hopefully Roy can post a picture of this one too, right? Yes. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll fire, fire it up and we'll see what it looks like. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to do it way high. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thanks for okay. joining us today. Yep, thanks.